opportunity, and, and he took full advantage of that opportunity. I couldn't be happier and prouder, prouder of him. You just got to have faith in your teammates, and honestly, you just you got to stay positive no matter what, and you got to believe in your teammates. And um, no doubt on that sideline, everybody was believing for him to, to make that field goal, and it was just great. And just to, just to see him coming all smiling, you know, it's just great for him to, to have that type of accomplishment. And, you know, we couldn't be prouder of him, you know, for, for doing something like that. Jake Oldroyd enters BYU lore in his first game as a Cougar. That was crazy to be in front of everybody like that. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting anything like that. Uh, but, you know, go Cougars, I guess. <laughs> Christian, David, I've been waiting 23 hours to say this. It's appropriate that Comic-Con came to Utah because a droid hit the game winner for BYU. Oh, not All surprised, right. Star That's Wars pretty good. fans. Star All Wars right, fans. let's break this down. Tell us what went on. Man, what a crazy game, right? For BYU to control the entire game and have it come down to a kicker they never really had. And it was kind of crazy to look at how the offense had changed for BYU and coming up with big plays on third and 13. Yeah, this is a great play. You're going to see Taysom Hill in his new pro-style offense. You see him, I feel like he's more subtle in this offense. But this offensive line, you got to give credit to them. All night, they gave him a great pocket. And this is one particular play where you have two blitzing linebackers. You see T.J. Cronin picks up the first one. And then Braden Obakri does a great job of scanning across the front, picks up the other blitzing linebacker, and Taysom, you look at his footwork, great footwork, stands in the pocket and delivers a dart to Marona Laulu Pututau for a huge first down on a third and 13. Yeah, and where you'd see, you know, an offensive set in the past where you'd see Taysom bounce out or even a Tanner Manga bounce out and roll and try to throw a deep ball, this is the pro-style offense. You stay, you stay in the pocket, you let your players block for you, and Taysom has the arm strength to deliver a strike. And what a killer play to, to start off things. Yeah, it really got him going. And I, like I said, I think Taysom this year, you'll see him much more comfortable in that pocket. And he said in the past, look, I don't want to run as much as I have in the past. I want to sit back and throw. And we see he has a great arm and he can get the ball to his receivers. Yeah, and that's what you want. You got to convert those third and 13. Another thing that was great to have back on the field for BYU, a guy that hasn't been on the field in some time, is Jamal Williams. What did you see from him? Well, Jamal, I mean, he's been off the field for so long, and finally he gets in a, a pro-style offense that also fits him well. He's more of a north-south runner. He's gained some weight, so now he can take those hits. And we see a play here where, you know, BYU's offensive line has been a little suspect. We had a lot of question marks coming into this year. And you see Andrew Ide, the left tackle, does a great job of washing down the defensive end. And Jamal has this big gap. He's able to come in north-south. He's able to get downfield. And great job in the open field. Doesn't quite make it in the end zone, gets caught at the end, had a, had a penalty as well. But I like his vision. He knows that there's a gap, and he hits it hard. And what I liked about that is the offensive line created that lane, and Jamal doesn't have to dance in the backfield. He's just going downhill and moving on and, and just creating lanes for himself and, and making plays. Yeah, he's, he's going to be fun to watch this year. Like I said, he's ready. This is his year, senior and, year. And obviously not everything's perfect, right? Arizona fought. They, they score late with a minute 20. What did you see from this play that, that the defense can improve as they're very young? Well, Nick Wilson, the running back's great big threat. But this is the third and three situational awareness. BYU's got to know this is going to be a run play. But instead, you have guys that are new positions, Harvey Longy, Francis Bernard, they're out of position. Francis needs to be a gap over, and that's how you get a big run. And you know what, Christian, you've played in this defense before. You've played in Harvey's spot. I mean, what, what did he do wrong here? What does he need to do in the future to correct this mistake? Yeah, Harvey had a killer game, right? He, he created sacks and pressures. But if it's third and three, you've got to read your key, your tackle. If he's doing a run set, you've got to follow the, the, the hip of that tackle, and he'd be right in that position to make a tackle. Francis and Harvey will learn from that, and they'll improve moving on. All right, guys. Um, all in all, hey, success. It's, 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 it's a win. Yeah. All right. 18 60. I, I thought it would be a little higher scoring. Oh, yeah. yeah. But the defenses both came out and played lights out. Okay, guys, stick around. You still have a couple more games, the uh, Utes and the Aggies, to break down as well. Thanks, guys.